Hey everyone, uh, welcome to Viewers, Comments and Questions. Dan here. Mick here, hello. We're recording this, it's not live. Unfortunately, our internet died, uh, or at least was intermittent this evening. We have uh, periodic problems with it. It's hard to believe it's 2024. I shall take my annoyance and throw it away now. Welcome. <laughs> we'll, A minute of silence for yeah, our internet. Yeah, uh, it's hard to believe. I think it's all those people coming back from Glastonbury. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, gridlock up the top of the road, because we're on the main route, you see, from Glastonbury to London. Yes. Oh, and, and everyone's in the cars going... Mm. It was, it's was. it been gridlock. Well, not gridlock. It's been nose to tail since 7am this morning. Right. Because I, I had a drive here, mm. and it was a nightmare. Yeah. Yeah. There we are. So, uh, hello to anyone that went to Glasgow and is listening to this by way of recovery. Yep. W Massive shout out to the idols uh, who played on, uh, I want to say, Friday night, Saturday night. It was on, it was live on, um, on the telly. Yeah. Uh, far out, man. They just tore a hole in the place. Oh, I'm going to watch that. unreal. Like, the big surprise for me was Coldplay. I, right. I'm clearly not a Coldplay fan. I love right. their first record and everything okay. after that, not so much. Man, that is how to do a festival set. Right. It was unbelievable. Banger after banger. Absolutely. Yeah, but just the way he interact they interacted with the crowd, right. the whole the light show. Yeah. They See those bracelets yeah. they had on. It failed in the heart thing, unfortunately. Oh, did it? Yeah, just to show that technology is crap after all. <laughs> so let's move <laughs> along. Um first question this week with great thanks um comes from Stephen Catian. Hi Stephen. Hi Stephen. Looks like Stephen's in Japan. Hello to Japan. Actually, I'm meeting up with Yuki Hayashi from Free the Tone next week. Oh, great. Yeah, he's coming over. Um, anyway, Stephen says, all my shirts are TPS shirts. So are mine. <laughs> mine too. I, I do this thing at the weekends and when I go on holiday, I don't wear any TPS clothing. Oh, okay. Which is hard. I don't think I could do it. Yeah, yeah. I couldn't go away for more than a couple of days. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, what are your songwriting approaches? If you were going to go about songwriting, how would you do it? Oh. Oh, um, I, I always start with something that tickles my ear musically. Um, I've never been able to just pull an amazing melody out of the air or a great lyric. I'm always one for finding something, you know, an, an interesting, uh, you know, something, something interesting. Yeah. You know, whatever that is. And then trying to, you know, I'm not a great songwriter by any stretch, so, I've, so I need to, you know, build stuff around interesting chords. It's funny where it comes from, isn't it? Very funny. The, I think the tip is to, if you get an idea, is to open up your telephone or whatever it is you've got handy, usually a phone, whether it's an iPhone or an Android phone, will have some sort of recorder on it. Yeah. And whether it's just a voice memo or whatever your particular app is, just sing the idea into the phone there and then. And yeah. Don't let it go. Because so often you'll have a, an idea, a melody, a chord sequence, a lyric, or just come from nowhere, which is, well, it's not from nowhere. It's from the universe, man. And uh, you, need to, you need to get it down so you don't forget it because you'll get home and it'll be gone. Mm. Every single song I've ever written, which isn't many, come like that. Yeah. They just, it'll be a lyric or it'll be a, um, just having been a writer for <coughs> yeah, right. the vast majority of my professional life, the thing I find hardest is lyrics because song lyrics have nothing to do with good writing. I remember when we did that thing for UA and we were flying home from LA and you said, oh, we're doing this thing mm. and we're going to go and write a song. And you, and you went, yeah, I'll never forget it. You said, um, oh, you know, I've just been listening to, uh, I think it was an album had come out. Um, uh, oh, what's his name? Um, Isbell. No, no. Blues, Steve Earl. No, Blues Guy, you've got the picture in the toilet. John Mayer. John Mayer. The picture had come out and you, and you said, I've had a realisation. You said, you don't, lyrics are nothing. You can write just gibberish. Yeah. And then I thought, okay, I'll just go and write gibberish for this song, and I did. And you come back with this, like, haiku piece of art. It was amazing. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. 
No. <laughs> you, you know, lyrics yeah. are important. <laughs> yeah, I, f- I find lyrics hard. Having been like a proper writer, mm. lyrics throw away all conventions of proper writing. And my least favourite lyrics, funnily enough, are the poetic ones. Oh, okay. Are the, are the flowery ones. Yeah. I, I find it overblown. I am in awe of anyone... Like, I love Noel's songwriting. Anyone mm. that can sit down with a simple chord sequence yeah. and make it their own. Well, that's... That's, that's the th- stuff that I blows my mind. The thing is, uh, I had a massive realisation about this. It, um, it is your own. Because you'll immediately start saying things like, this isn't mine, it comes from somewhere else. But the fact that you're doing it and playing it and singing it means that it's yeah, yours. Yeah. And I've, I've never been able to get over that, but right. I think that's the way to do it. Anyway, so the, the idea comes to you, note it down, go home and, and work it up. And don't... All the barriers to finishing it will be everything we've just talked about, feeling like it's not original enough, feeling like it's not good enough. Just, you know, finish it, let it go, start again. Yeah. I wish I had the guts to do that, but I don't, so... Yeah. Yeah. Um, and all that stuff, do you do lyrics first, do you do melody first? Some people might have an answer to that. I think it's largely fooey. It's just start. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And piece it together. Um, let's see, who else is in? Chris Liddell. Hello, Chris. Hi, Chris. I can't see the show this week, but I have a beverage each on me and uh, grab a question from the chat. Thanks so much, Chris. Um, we can't grab the chat because it is now dead, unfortunately. So um, with respect, we'll skip over and uh, and head on to the next question. We hope you're having a nice time, whatever you're doing. Joel Silber. Hi, Joel. Hi, Joel. Uh, Joel has got a Celestian G1265 that I'm going to buy off him. Ooh. Um, he said he saw Ainsley Lister on Friday. Killed Come it. Come on. Yeah. Uh, loud, feedback, direct amp sound, tone angels weeping. Uh, repeatedly wore Dan's tone ecstasy face. Come on. <laughs> having... Been on stage with him. Oh, so Mix played with him a few times. He came down and sat in at our Leicester gig. And um, these guys were doing all the all the blues feels. And I, and I was on stage. I thought, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just pop off stage for a second. I went out the front and listened to you, him, and uh, Jake. Jake. And it was like, he's really got something very special. Yeah. And it's very, very cool. It's very tough. Rhythmically, his right hand is great, but he's a very sensitive guitar player. It's very know? sensitive. Very sensitive. But, it, but like, it just, and that's just his, the, the range of what, what he can do within a single phrase. It's amazing. Really amazing. I, I just think that that's partly what comes of doing it forever yeah, yeah. and being true to it. You mm. know, you can't fake that stuff. Um, and it is, it's always just a delight to see Ainsley play and other players who, who deliver on that level. Yeah, it's brilliant. Amazing. Hope you had a good time, Jill. Jason Thompson. Hello, Jason. Good day, says, mate. Leg ends. Well, Leg yeah. ends, says Jason Thompson. I'm yes. finally getting to watch live again. We're oh, really sorry. sorry. We're not live. Um, thank goodness for archive shows. No question. Please grab one from the chat. Keep up the great work. Yeah, sorry, we can't access the chat I'm afraid uh, maybe maybe the next um, BCQ Rosie if do you I have can a question bring myself to do it again um, we'll just do a no super chat one and do them all from the chat for that good haircut for that reason I did yeah that's good today um, there you go I was getting question. a bit Rapunzel <laughs> there was I bet not stand too close uh, random um... suitors climbing up my pigtails I'm joking, of course. <laughs> I'm joking, of course. Jason Thompson. Uh, no, we just heard from Let Jason. This will be Cat's Music Journey. Cat's Music Journey. Hello, gents. I love a Tube Screamer or a TS uh, into a clon with a Strat. Any position, both lead and rhythm. Nice. Cleans up with volume and dynamics. Do you know any two-in-one pedal that has both? Thank you. You're Ooh. a continuous source of inspiration and joy. As always, you're a crispy pigeon. Yeah. Uh, I don't know because so normally, so take something like the protein, which is a uh, nobles, nobles, and a blues breaker. Yeah, there's quite a lot that are blues breaker. Yeah. Um, so, for example, Jesse Davies, King Tone, King Tone. 
This is a tube screamer and a blues yeah. breaker. Yeah. But I don't know. The Cornerstone Gladio is a Dumble and a Clonish. Okay. Ish. ish oh, that's ish. interesting. Um, yeah, the thing is because the tube screamer and the Clon are both mid pushed things. Now, even though, you know, you use the Clon as an overdrive and it's, you know, big and full and that would work great. I think most um, most people, because you've got two fairly prominent mid-range sounds there, um, it would be a, th yeah, not the most sought after combination. However, used in the right context, I'm sure it sounds absolutely awesome. But yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know a two-in-one pedal that does that specifically. Yeah, the one to get is the Nord Van Gravity which is obviously inspired by John Mayer. So that's a TS-10 and a clone in one. Oh, there you go. Um, if you can get one, they're, they're sold out everywhere and they're certainly not uh, by any stretch of the imagination affordable. But I gigged, I did some of my summer gigs last year with one of those and liked it a great deal. Yeah, they do one called the 83 drive, I think, and one that's a gravity. The 83, I think, I think is a blues breaker and a clon style and the other is tube screamer and a clon. There must be others, there must be others, mm. uh, but the, I would unreservedly recommend the Nordvang if you can find one. Brilliant. Nordvang, N-O-R-D-V-A-N-G. I think they're from Scandinavia somewhere. And the great thing about the Nordvang is that once it's on your board, it, you'll just be pinching yourself with how good it looks. <laughs> they look awesome, those things. Yeah, they, they really are lovely, but by the same token, you know, a, a mini tube screamer and a, a Wampler Tumnus yeah. would would do a fantastic job for a fraction of the price and um, probably about as much pedal board real estate as yeah. well. So, yeah, I mean, the Nordvang is pretty special, I have to say. It's also got lots of options in terms of... Um, relative clipping levels yeah, okay. with diodes and things like that right. and some other things. It is it is absolutely excellent. So Awesome. Uh, Jason Sears. Hello, Jason. Hi, Jason. Do you have any thoughts on ported cabs versus traditional closebacks? Thank you for your sage advice over these many years. I had a cab built for me in America many, many, many years ago. And what I wanted was like a a two by twelve vertical two by twelve closed back bottom open top right like the, like the boogie that's the boogie one and the cab turned up and the bottom one was ported and I'm like no this is not what I asked for <laughs> and I feel like a doofus because I sealed up the port before I'd even tried it mm. what and yeah. Because I'm like, because this is not what I wanted. I was so oh, I clear on, on what I wanted. I'm like, well, let's see if this works. So I wanted the, I wanted the closed back, thud thing. Yeah. I didn't want, that's you know, there's, I didn't want this. Is this the, the guy in here? And, um. But I feel I feel so daft now because I've heard some really great ported cabs, and I didn't even I had one, and I didn't even play it. Yeah, I haven't spent enough time with one to really know. Is that is our Boogie Two Twelve? Is that ported? The bottom, no. that's just sealed. I do have here a Messer Thiel. It's called. I don't know if that's the way you pronounce it or T L or whatever. Thiel T H I E L E cab, and that is a tiny one twelve with an E V in it, and that is ported. Sounds pretty massive. Um, so the idea, I guess, is that it just throws a bit more low end out from a small enclosure without okay. being sealed. Right. You know, that's the way a lot of studio monitors are designed, so you can get decent low end at oh, interesting. sensible yeah, volumes. Oh, okay. interesting. Right. I want to say the bare-faced ones might be ported as well, but I don't know. Mm. I haven't spent enough time with them to know. I, after all these years, all these years, every time I just hear an open back 212, I'm like, oh, that's home. That's, that's home for me. Do you want to know where my passport was? Where? Teen says, you had put it in a box, but not the box. It was a, 
the bottom of a box with um, folders and paperwork. So um, yeah. There we are then. There we are then. Mystery no solved. Box, not the box. Exactly. Um, if you if you wouldn't take it as a personal insult, Dan, I, I'm surprised. Hang on, hang on. Go. I'm surprised you don't relinquish control of passports to teen full stop. Oh, no, no. I, I'm normally amazing. Really? At that. Yeah. I, I've I haven't because I'm so fastidious about getting my passport back. But I think um, we swapped the folder. Uh. Um, but anyway. Well, that's good. It's, so it's, you, you it's are going solved. to America. Yeah, we are going to no America. No problems. You, how, you should check the, the expiry date. Yeah, yeah. That's, no, that's good. all good. Okay. All good. Because you would have just about have time to fix it, I think. Oh, I don't know, um, because it's Australian. Uh, um, so, yes. Um, don't know enough about them, Jason, is the answer. Do do We own at least one. Um, yeah. I, I'm assuming that your desire is a fuller sound at lower volume, given that that's what everybody seems to be craving at the moment, not least me. Um, shout out to Chad Kemp, says Jeremiah McCann. Uh, we bonded over love of the show and now we perform in a band together. Oh, no way. <laughs> that's really cool. What what's the, is the name of the band there? Um, I think it's uh, McCann Kemp. I think it's what it's called. Is the name of the band? McCann Kemp, Kemp. Kemp's McCann. Kemp's McCann. Kemp's McCann Banjangles. Okay. That's what it's if called. If you think McCann, you McCann. <laughs> anyway, the question from Jeremiah, the question from Jeremiah McCann is, uh, what are some of your favourite acoustic pickups? Okay. The K&K &K Mini? Yeah, K&K &K Pure Mini is my favourite one. That's what I have in my main acoustic guitar. Is that what's in mine as well? The Pure Mini, it's got the little volume thing. Yeah, if that's what you asked for. Yeah. Um, purely passive. Oh, it is the pure mini because there's a pure Western mini, isn't there? Right. And the, and but this is not the Western one. This is the pure mini. So that's my favourite one. Yeah. But there's an undersaddle one. I don't know if you can still get it. Seymour Duncan made a thing called the Woody. Yeah. And it was just like, it looked like a piece of wood that it had, and you just shove it in your sound hole. Sound hole, yeah. And I preferred that to every other sound hole pickup really? I tried. It sounded, it sounded like. An old recording. Yeah. It was really cool. There were, if you stay below the seventh fret with sound hole pickups, they're fine. Yeah. The minute you go above, it starts sounding like an electric guitar to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so if you're strumming down there, they can sound great. The, some of the Fishman blend ones were good, which had an internal mic and the uh, under saddle. Matrix blend, maybe? Ellipse blend? Yeah. Can I, can I tell you what my problem with those is? Phase? I don't understand this. It, you have a mic, yeah, and you blend it to a um, an impulse response of an acoustic guitar. No, you're talking about the Aura system. The Aura system, which is the digital modelling one. Right. This is just a microphone and an undersaddle. Oh, okay, yeah. No, those ones are great. Yeah, those ones are great. But the the system where you blend mm. the mic or the piezo between that and the digital thing. Yeah, and I'm like, it. It just couldn't. Yeah. Had I, no one had no one tried it before it went out. It's like it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, because there is no position that it's not out of phase. Yeah, you know, because um, of the because of the latency. Because of the latency. Yeah, and it's so yeah. Yeah, um, but the the non digital ones, which is just have a microphone, internal mic, and a thing. The trick to know with those is never blend the mic beyond about twenty five percent maximum. Oh, wicked! Okay. Because okay. if you do too much, uh, you just get loads of handling noise off the guitar, and it's boomy and it's weird, and you have to go. So you just want a little bit of that mic mixed in. Interestingly enough, the sound of you know under saddle piezo or piezo, as we would say here, pickups has become the sound of live acoustic guitar, hasn't it, in the last 30 years? Yeah. Um, whenever I hear a Gibson, no matter whose hands it's, it, it's in, I'm always like, that sounds good. Right. And I don't know why that is. Like a Hummingbird or a J45 or something always sound pretty good. Like plug, their pickups have been plugged in. Yeah, I yeah. don't know which, I don't know what one, I don't even know what one they use. The, 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 so the K&K, K and K Pure Mini with the volume controlled add-on is the one that Dan and I both use, and I've used it for years. Purely passive. You do need to have some sort of post preamp 
with it. So I put that straight into my AER acoustic amp. If it's going into front of house, they really do, we'll need to do some work on mm -hmm. it. All that stuff about trying to get a great sound straight out of the guitar, I'm never sure. Because when you say, what's your some of your favorite acoustic pickups? The question for me would be, what are some of your least hated ones? Because none of them sound good. Yeah. And, and no matter what all the manufacturers say, they don't sound like acoustic guitars. You, what you're doing is you're trying to make it louder and make it the sort of best worst situation. Yeah. I would say. Yeah, I had a... Um... But I do like the K&K. I've done hundreds of gigs with that and I love it. Yeah. So... No, I, I had a... Uh, there's a UK manufacturer of acoustic stuff in the most really beautiful stuff and I had it, one of his pickups... I had one of his preamps that I used for my old Martin and when I used to do Bipolar Bears with Doug. And that was a, I mean, it was a rock duo, so it was really loud. And it was into, you know, I had pedal board and his overdrive and all that sort of stuff on. Um, and that was really good. Was uh, it RJ something? No. Um, it, it, it will come to me. But it... Shadow? They're German. No. Mm. Anyway, it was, yeah, it was a long time ago, but um, it it also depends on the gig, the type of gig that you're doing, because saying you're doing an acoustic gig is the same as saying I'm just doing, doing an electric, electric gig. gig. Yeah, they're it, all it's vastly, vastly different. different. Yeah. Sure, 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 sure. Um, Fishman obviously is probably Fishman's still the market brilliant. leader, yeah. and then LR Bags make some really good ones as well. But for for the fact there's no battery, adds no weight to the guitar. Uh, it's as long as it's, and it's under the, what I didn't want is anything in between my saddle and yeah. the bottom of the bridge. I just wanted it to be under the bridge and I prefer that. Absolutely. Yeah. As soon I, this, so when I was getting the, the, that guitar made video, which is in the channel, um, the Kincaid, as soon as, and I'd tried it with a bunch of guitars before, no matter what pickup I put underneath the saddle, just the tone of the guitar changed. Yeah. You know, but just the straight bone thing. Yeah. It's like, okay. And then you then playing yours and hearing yours is like, that's incredible. So yeah. it just went the same way and they did. They're amazing. Yeah. Uh, Isaac Draper. Hello, Isaac. Hi, Isaac. Isaac says, yo, chaps, should I put my Thorpey Deep Oggin, which is a chorus, mm -hmm. I believe, in the loop of my Victory Copper for mid game crunch or keep it in the front? Thanks for the great vids. Keep it in the front. I would keep the chorus in the front. Even if you're running the amp drivey. Especially if I'm running the amp drivey. There you go. Horse's mouth. You heard it here. Yeah. It's analogue. It's very analogue as well. Yep. I know that sounds like a slightly crazy thing to say. Um, it, it, the effects loop might overload it a bit. Yeah. Yeah. So I, um, at the Foo Fighters on the weekend, Pat's mirror on his pedal board. It's a really simple board but he's got uh, a flanger and uh, just a couple of analog boss pedals and everything's straight in the front and he's got these wizard amps. Has he? <sighs> Far out, man. I've got, I'll have to play something. They're the hundreds or the two hundreds? <sighs> the, the hundreds. Yeah. Cr just cranked. Yeah. And sound of a, that old boss chorus straight in the front and it's a really great sound. There you go. Yeah. So it, it, the, the, that modulation, analog modulation, into the front of a dirty amp it sounds mm. really wonderful. It's one supplementary thing to add, Isaac. I don't know if you're running anything else in the loop of the amp. If you are, then obviously try it. Try it in the loop and in front. If you're not running anything in the loop of the amp, rejoice ye, because <laughs> what it means is you don't have all the extra marky muck and cables to worry about. So you've just got your pedal board straight in the front of the amp. You're you, 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 two, three less cables now, certainly two less cables, mm -hmm. and everything is much easier in your life. So, if you were thinking of it, about it as the only pedal in your loop, definitely don't do it. If you were thinking about it as an additional pedal in your loop, you at least have the setup to try it. Yeah. Uh, Jean Miropica. Jean Miropica, maybe. My Jean Miropica. Jean Miro. Miro Picard. Wasn't Jean Miro a an artist? Or maybe it was a different kind of Miro. You're, are you thinking of Jean Miro? <laughs> I 
No. <laughs> it's good, I like it. Ah, Juan. Juan Miro. Yeah. Or oh, it says Joan here. Okay. But, um... Any, anyway, uh, Jean Mirapica says, Hello, boys. Any opinion on carving amps? Um, oh, yeah. Carving X100B. Come on, rock. I've been given the opportunity to buy a used Bel Air 212. Supposedly very Fender-like. Take care. Car like, there was a period there. Carving were cracking out some extraordinary amps. Uh, always liked Carvin gear. I liked their guitars as well, but I really liked their amps. They... I thought they were great. Uh, I gigged a Bel Air 212 for about a year. Not loud enough? Yeah, it was It was great. It had four EL84s, though, which I thought was weird. Oh, okay. Well, I think it had four EL84s, if I'm remembering it correctly. It did sound great. It sounded, mm. sounded really groovy. I think I hammered it a bit, and it was making all sorts of noises by the time I got rid of it. But, right. Um, yeah, it was, it was good. I remember the sort of mid gainy overdrivey sorts of sounds were really nice mm. el 84 was used in that way never going to give you like really massive high headroom clean which might be why i moved it on but right um i, I do i certainly remember enjoying it mm. and it was tweed too nice happy days yeah yeah give yeah, it a go no. give yep. it a go the other thing is i'm assuming it won't be a tremendous amount of money so it could be a fairly safe punt yeah yeah Martin Tracy. Hello, Martin. He says, uh, greetings from County Louth, or Louth. I apologise if I've pronounced that incorrectly. In Ireland, uh, to my favourite feet. Looking for my first tube amp. Home use, 15 watts options, Laney Cubs Super 12, Fender Bass Breaker, Supro DK12, or a second-hand Hughes & Kettner uh, anniversary. I want two channel 20 watt, he says. Okay. Maybe. The Laneys are really great, great, great value for money. They sound really good. I know they did a VC15 and I think it's just a straight V15. This sounded brilliant. Um, VC and LC15 they were. Right, yeah, the VC15 then I thought was really, really great. If they still make it, that would be pretty awesome. Um, I haven't played one of the Cubs actually. But we do like Laney amps. Yeah. Despite not having many here. Um, Supro could be really interesting. Bit more well, old model, school. What model Supro is it? The DK12, whatever right. that is. Yeah, Supros are brilliant. Um, what else is there worth checking out in that range? Check out the Victory. Um, yeah. Uh, would it be... What's the 20 watt? The... Yeah, they did a BD2, I think it was called, little tiny, tiny thing. Mm -hmm. thing is, it's not, it, once you're into 20 watts, you're not a million miles away from 30 watts because take something like a deluxe reverb, for example, nominally 22 watts, but it'll outshout loads of amps rated at 50 watts. So the, the wattage is kind of... It's an indication. Uh, it's an indication. Yeah, that's yeah. all it is. Yeah. I would go more on size of speaker and size of cabinet because mm. that to me has more effect on the overall sound of the amp you know a five watt tube amp usually has a sound because it's in a box that big with an eight inch speaker or a 10 inch speaker and it just sounds like a box right mm -hmm. which is great if that's what you want stick that same amp into a 412 or a 212 boom you've got loads of bottom ends the the Dominance of mid range is lessened because you've the top and the bottom open out a bit more. So actually, cabinet size might be more interesting. Cornford Hurricane, if you can find one. Oh boy, twenty watts handmade British tube amp, just fantastic yep. thing, if you can find yeah. one. Yeah, and um, then you're also uh, Princeton's. He wants two channels. Get two Princeton's. <laughs> yeah, I would. Dan and I are, are are sort of joined when it comes to dual channel amps. There's very, very, very few dual channel amps that we play where we like both the channels. Mm. You've got far more latitude if you just get a really good basic clean sound mm. and use a nice overdrive or a tube overdrive or something for your second channel. You've yeah. got way, way, way more control over stuff, especially if you're in a smaller... I mean, this isn't always the case, but if you're in a smaller amp two channels, likelihood is some of those controls are going to be shared. 
Yeah. So you've got shared EQ or, I don't know, shared something or other. Whereas if you get it from a pedal, it's tube, it's in the front, you've got full EQ, could be, uh, could be another way to go about yeah. it. Yeah. Another amp that sits in that range, if you can find one, um, is the 65 Amps London. Oh, wow. So I had one of those and it was spectacular. So basically you've got a, an AC15 on one side and a Marshall, uh, the 20 watt Marshall on the other. And what a killer sounding amp. Shout out to Dan Bull, the 65 amps, really spectacular sounding thing. Mm. Um, yes, and Peter Stroud, of course. Yeah, man, they were, I remember them. Serious, serious amps. Yeah, I think if I was gonna pick one, out of those that you've mentioned. If you can find that Hughes and Kettner anniversary, I remember them sounding pretty decent. Right. Was it called an edition tube or something? I can't remember. I can't remember. Um, yeah. Yeah. Bass breaker's pretty cool, actually. Well, I've got my, the bass breaker, our bass breaker. 15, isn't it? The you've got... bass breaker 15. Yeah. Set up in the house. Mm. And... I'm just plugging into it and wailing, mm. and it sounds really great. I don't know. It's, so it's got an interesting gain makeup. It's three levels of input gain. Yeah. Um, but I, I don't think it's a two-channel amp. Uh, I can't remember. Yeah, no, I don't think so, but it's, it's a really great sounding thing. And Noel had one in his rig for a long time. Did he? Yeah. He had, you know, when he when he had the wall of of rock behind him, <laughs> it's a really really great sounding thing. <laughs> so I'm just checking my texts because uh, I'm getting texts about tonight's failed live stream, which is why we are recording this. Yeah, good luck, Martin. There's so much choice out there. Maybe try not to sweat it too much. Pick the thing that speaks to you and uh, go with it. Definitely. And uh, yeah, but I, I would, if you want a nice full sound, I would try and get something with a slightly bigger box. Yeah. Well, one of the things we're doing tomorrow, Jesse has like all the eras of the Tweed Deluxes and they did the, the, the small box Tweed Deluxe and the big box Tweed Deluxe, where the only difference is the cabinet. And it's astonishing. Yeah, it really is. Mm -hmm. It really is. We've um, this Bell and Howell amplifier here converted by our friend Phil. We were having a blat through earlier, and it's just on a two ten, and it sounds huge, doesn't it? Oh, is that two ten cab? Yeah, two oh, ten with Alnico Golds. Yeah, come on. Nice sounding cab that sounds wicked with a Princeton. Because they don't. Do that top end fart thing like you get with most tens. Okay. Uh, anyway, um, Martin continues to say decent clean tone can handle pedals. I like the effects loop option. Don't mind the full cable setup. It's not moving it. What are your thoughts? Yeah, hopefully that covers it, Martin. Um, Dan and I would always just have a clean amp or an on the edge amp, shall we say, run everything in the front add the drive from pedals pretty much always, unless you've got such a spectacular sounding overdrive in the amp, which would be something like our two rock TS1. It's, which the, is it's the only amp I would do that with. Dumble type thing. Yeah. Of all Robin's the amps. Dumble. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> or, or conversely sacrifice the clean tone entirely and get something like a crank tweed. That's when I'd be using the amps overdrive, but mm. a lot of two channel amps, it's it, so hard to balance those two channels. It's just one channel is always compromised. Yeah. 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 Good yeah. luck. Good luck. Good luck. Uh, Angad Singh. Hello, Angad. He says, uh, happy July. Indeed. Happy First of July. July. How did that happen? I know. You know how many weeks you live, Dan? 4,000 approximately. Approximately. Gets you, to, gets you to 80. Did you get the same book as well? I did. Yeah. I've started the audio book of it. Have you? Yeah. It's pretty... Powerful. Pretty good, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I want to say thanks to Will, who came to an experience day on Friday. Will, thanks so much. You very kindly gifted Dan uh, a couple books and CDs. 
Uh, yeah, thank you, Will. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Angad Singh says, I've been thinking of getting a Milkman Amp 50 for silent practice at home. Do you have experience with it? How is headroom and does it take pedals well? Love from Pasadena. He also says, also thank you for the wonderful content. It's fresh and inspiring to watch you guys play. Thank, thank you. you, buddy. <laughs> Not sure anyone said that about my play before, but anyway, thank you very much. Um, okay, why... My question is, why are you buying an amplifier for silent practice? If I was doing silent practice, I would have a not amplifier. Well, there are a couple of reasons. Um, one of the things, I think the Milkman gives you the opportunity to run a... Uh, if you got to a situation where you were able to be not silent, you just stick a, stick a speaker into it. And away you go. Makes a lot of sense. A bit like the Victory V4 series is yep. the same. The... One of the, um, speaking to uh, Salah on Thursday and looking through um, some of the stuff they've got going on, they've got the new simplifier. This would be the guitar tech for the Foo Fighters. Yes. Uh, one, yeah, one of them. Um, and the, uh, the simplifier, if you, if you, for silent practice it's so good made by um analog it, dreams it's made by dsm and humboldt dsm and humboldt there you go close yeah dsm close. and humboldt simplifier crazy tube circuits have just released something as well there's there's, there's a sort of race to since so many more people have to play silently or quietly now there's some pretty high-end things coming out mm. that will enable that uh the simplifier is the dsm and humboldt simplifier is one crazy tube circuits have just come out with another there's always been stuff like um that thing that sounds like a dumble from years ago eternity something like that is it anyway you will need speaker simulation just for the yeah for the record um, I'm guessing the Milkman has speaker simulation, does it? Yeah, I think a lot of those uh, guys have like analog speaker simulation in them. Yeah. You know. Um, so the amp, 50 watts, single 12AX7. Uh, do 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 Um Doesn't say anything about speaker simulation. You will just need to check that because if you're listening in headphones, silent practice, you're gonna need something that's simulating a speaker there. And and my my huge apologies if it does have speaker headphone oh amp. it does sorry it's got an integrated headphone amp which has speaker simulation there right brilliant. there you go head headroom will be it will be totally fine yes it will take pedals well because it's a lovely clean platform so yeah it um if, if your heart's telling you to get that get that yeah he makes great stuff absolutely he, great he, stuff he, he uh all everything I've ever played of his has sounded wonderful, and I'm yeah. sure that's no exception. Yeah, uh, uh, for me it comes with a caveat: with if you are going to plug it into to a speaker at some point, it's a great choice. If your plan is to never plug it into a speaker, you don't need there are other things to spend that much money. As well. You can buy a basic device as long as it's got some speaker simulation on it. Um. Yeah. Good luck. Good luck. Eagle Ray Rob. Hello, Rob. Good day, mate. He says, I just want to say thanks and big love to everyone. I will flex a little and say I'm loving my Electric Lightning by Thorpey. It's currently stacked with a Peak Cornish SS3 and a Fairfield Circuitry Barbershop. Nice. It's a lovely noise. Big hugs. Yeah, man. There's some um, Cornish and Fairfield. Some uh, effects pedal royalty on there, we'd say. And, and Thorpey, obviously. It's cool, man. Nice to hear from you. Yeah. 
Steve Mass. Hello, Steve. Hey, Steve. Hope, Hope you're, you're doing awesome. well. He says, I am 65 and I haven't played live live in decades. Arthritis is limiting me to about a two and a half fret stretch. So, of course, I just bought a quad cortex. <laughs> a new gear day, he says. Nice, man. Um... Two and a half frets. I never stretch more than that. What's a half fret? Uh, it's three frets, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Or is it just... Oh, maybe, maybe no, I do stretch a bit further than that. Um, yeah, man, all the, all the best chords are... They're all there. Only two frets yeah. wide anyway. There you go. And certainly, um, the, you can get all the colour notes by being two frets wide, just about, usually. Yeah. You could play an inversion or a, just a triad or whatever yeah. within two frets. Then if it gets really bad, stick on a slide, you're golden. <laughs> and revel in the simplicity Yeah. Uh, of simple chord voicing. So, one of the things with that, if you look at... a. Um, you know, a player that had real limitations with his left hand, um, like... Django. Django. Now, it's not that Django couldn't fret things with his other fingers. He absolutely could, but they were very limited with what they could do. But you just end up moving your hand a bit more, but it's still all there. The notes are the same, you know. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Good on you, Steve. Yeah, well done, mate. Uh, Keep strumming, mate. Keep strumming. And enjoy that quad cortex. Lots of noise in there. Well, mm -hmm. I don't mean noise, I mean sounds. Um, Carl Longbottom Guitars. Hello, sir. Hello, Carl. He says, evening, gents. Are you familiar with the Tough Set Bridge uh, for Fender offsets like Jaguars and Jazz Masters? I've just fit one and I'm very impressed. Fully adjustable and fully locking. Oh, cool. Tough Set Bridge. You Did you replace the one on your... Oh, no, you replaced just the bridge, wasn't it? Yes. Wasn't the whole thing. No. And you got the mastery one? Yes. Oh, the mastery on the Jags. Astonishing. Oh, that looks great. That doesn't look massively dissimilar from the mastery, actually, does it? No. Nice. Yeah, that looks great, mate. That looks really great. Fully locking, fully rocking action, it says. Fully locking, fully rocking. I like nice that. Nice font there, too. Helvetica. Black condensed, I would say. Um... Trollst Jern. Trollst Jern says, Why do some people super chat, get their comment read out, and request a cue from the chat? Like WTF? <laughs> you got your comment read, and now you want them to do a free cue from the chat. Kind of rude, in my opinion. Unbelievable. Um, we'll take it as a, a gesture of goodwill, uh, Jern. Just a bit of altruism in a time where the world could probably use it. I like that. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll look on the, the brighter side of that coin. Nevertheless, concern noted. When you do stretches, do you go like that or do you go like that? Depends where I am on the neck. Right. If I play like that, mm -hmm. it, it all goes wrong. Like that? Yeah, the only, if I'm playing like a, there's a couple of things. Must get rid of that tape that is sticking to the bottom of the guitars. Um, so uh, let's see. If I'm playing, yeah. If that if that requires that level of stretch, then I have to do it like that. Okay. And then, but if I'm playing like a, there's nothing. A three note line. Yeah, I would. There's nothing I would ever play that would require that. But if you go, if you just come up there, it's just whether you're, you're there or there. Uh, usually there, I think. So if I'm playing anything over a stretch, there is a there is a lick I play in a in like a blues solo. Okay, so yeah, you're straight wristed. But here. I'm more like that. Oh, okay. 
And then the other thing I would play, if I think it's if I've got to put my pinky down. Uh, like when up you go, here. When okay, you go to so, the five chord. Yeah. Yeah, unless I've got to put my pinky down, I'm, I'm like that. Right, okay. Oh, there I'll go into that. I have been enjoying learning these tunes. Good. Yeah. Just getting on it. Nice. Absolutely remembering what it is I like about the electric guitar. Right. So please, can't wait to see it. The big Taylor Blues implosion, people. I'm gonna call my own dip. The Dan Bam Blues Exclusion. Uh huh. You're gonna have horns as well, right? Unfortunately, not on the first gig. Okay. They can't make it. They're too busy. Get a get a DJ. Uh, we're doing a Jimmy Horn song. It's like. You're gonna to have to um, mute the springs in the back of the guitar to <laughs> no ensure you have absolutely, absolutely no reverb. Uh, yes, uh, Mick Taylor Blues Implosion, Thursday the 18th of July at the Tain Blues Club. Um, tickets on sale now, and I do need to do some promo, otherwise it's gonna be empty. Uh, Rodrigo Guaspari, hello Rodrigo Guaspari. Greetings. He said, evening legends, I would like to recommend Rick Beato's latest video with Ted Gigioia or Goya, and I'm sorry, I don't, I neither know who that is nor how to say it. Do you know who that is, Ted, Ted Goya? No. Uh, I believe you would really like it, especially Mick. Cheers and much love. Um, Mr. Beato is absolutely smashing it out of the park at the moment. He is. He is making the best music related content on YouTube, in my opinion. Did you see the thing with Uncle Larry? And Beato? Yeah. No. Yeah, it's is that recent? Serious. Uh, I think so. I don't know. I only, I watch about like one tenth of a YouTube video a week, so it takes me a minute to catch up on things. But yes. um, he's very good. Uh, Eagle Ray Rob says, please take a question from the chat. We will redress this in a future show. Uh, Rob, thank you. Sean Jeremilatos. Hello, Sean. Hello, Sean. He says, uh, hello, Tone Mavens. Tone Mavens. I tried running my CXM in stereo and the amps are out of phase. Flipping polarity at my ABY made the reverb disappear. I assume the CXM sums to mono. Have you dealt with this? Yes. Yeah. You have to sum, you have to flip the phase after the CXM, not before it. Yeah, you've got to, you've, it's yeah, got to, it's that, got to be that, in that phase. Mean, yeah, it's got to be in phase when it hits the CXM. Yes, absolutely. And then if your amps are out, out of phase, phase, you're stuffed. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Amps have to be in phase. Yeah. So if you don't have any other means of flipping the phase, what you can do is reverse the speaker cables on one amp, and then that will sort you out. Your diagnosis about losing your reverb flipping the face before it is absolutely right. Mm -hmm. we've, we've been through this, Dan and I both. So you have to hit hit the thing in phase, hit the CXM in phase, and then correct the phase of your amps after. That's one benefit of using G3, for example, because that's exactly what happens there. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's really annoying, isn't it? It's, it's maddening. Yes. Because stereo, stereo can be can be fun, but there's a price to pay in the tomfoolery required mm. to get it all lovely and balanced and stuff. So I'm just I've 
I still have a an offset delay, I'm going to call it. It's not ping pong. It's where the delay is a little bit uh, faster on one side. That's the only stereo, stereo-ness stuff I have going on now. Um, yeah. Yeah, strictly wet dry for me. From here on in. Yeah. It's just too many options, too many times where you can't take two amps. Therefore, sure. you need all your effects in one amp. Yeah. And it needs to be not compromised yep. in such a way. We did, and don't get me wrong, the CXM in stereo is heavenly. Yeah. It is such a beautiful, beautiful sound. But even I went back to just running it in one amp because too, yeah. too much hassle. Yeah. Too much hassle. Uh, Gargantua. Gargantua. Hey, DNM. When does playing guitar turn into playing music and vice versa? And does it change how you play? What role do pedals play in that? And please drink that Weller or I will come back and drink it for you. <laughs> AKY, cheers, Jason. Yes, we, we are going to drink it. The idea was that we were going to crack it when we get to 400,000 subscribers. Yes. That was going to be the plan, Jason. Thank you. Yes, it's on the way. We're nearly there. Um, oh, I see. I think that's a Kentucky cheers to you. Is KY Kentucky? I don't want to get this wrong. I know Americans are quite touchy about where they come from. Mm -hmm. Can be. Uh, yeah, I think it is. Yeah. Did you watch the soccer yesterday, Daniel? No. Who played? Um, England. Oh, how did they go? Slovakia. How did they go? It was going so badly. I'm... Uh, by the way, I'm not a soccer fan, but I do enjoy tournaments like this. Okay. You know, What's the tournament? It's the Eurovi Euro Championships. I was going to say Eurovision. Brilliant. <laughs> it's the European Championships. It happens every other two years when the World Cup isn't happening. Right. Um, so the World Cup goes these four years and the Euro Championships goes these four years. Oh, okay. Anyway, quite a big deal, obviously, because... It's kind of a big deal. Uh, for, for football fans, it's a big deal. Um, anyway, so England have been playing particularly badly. Okay. Like hilariously badly, yet they topped their group in the group stages. And then they played um, Slovakia yesterday. And with, with due respect to the great nation of Slovakia and all its people, England should walk over Slovakia, right? Because of our footballing prowess in the Premier League and all that. Mm. Anyway, Slovakia get a fantastic goal. And then... It, it, Right in the last minute of stoppage time, it looks like they're going out. All the commentators are basically hanging up their mics and walking out. They're just, they just can't believe how bad it is. So England was going home. Yep. England were going to be knocked out. Um, and there's a fantastic young player called Bellingham. Right. And he scored an overhead kick, which made it go into extra time. And then Harry Kane scored an amazing header to make it 2-1. And they managed to just scrape through. Oh, my And it was goodness. a proper nail-biter. So, um, yeah, anyway, uh, it was very entertaining. Uh, why, why am I talking about that? Football, soccer, uh, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's, very, it's very entertaining. Um, Lefty-O Bass. Lefty-O Bass says, evening, d &M. I missed the idols, sadly, but managed to catch John Smith's heartfelt set on the acoustic stage of uh, Pilton's Farmer's Fair this weekend. What a lovely human he is. Take a cue from the chat. Uh, we will redress that. I love people who still call it Pilton. It used to be called the Pilton Pop Festival. Right. Years ago, because the village it's in is Pilton, basically. Glasto. Oh, really? Oh, okay, I had no idea. All right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All my mum's friends used to call it the Pil Pilton. You go to Pilton? John is a very special artist. And I'm, yeah, seeing him live is, is yeah. really wonderful. I'm glad he played there. Yeah. Glad he played there. Um, Ian Jeffrey. Hi, evening, Ian. Evening, Legends. New guitar day is an Aria 1532T. Love. The Arias are great guitars. Some are. Well, well, the ones that I've played have been really good. The old ones. Remember the Arias that had those? Oh, yeah, man. That looks really great. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, nice. Like a, a bit like one of those weird ass Yamaha guitars yeah. you used to see. Yeah, really funky looking, kind of 
oddly offset. I, I would show you to the camera, but you can just Google it. 1532T. Um, if Mr. Google lives in your house. Um, what's the most obscure budget guitar you've ever been impressed by? Ah. Uh, oh. Mine my, is... Go on. No, so, my cousin had a, and I think it was an Aria. Perfect cousin? Uh, what's a perfect cousin? It's a song by Shogel Farky, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a pass for me. Um, he was a cousin of the many cousins, but he the had... The undertones. My perfect cousin. Look, there he is. Shergal Farkey singing it. <laughs> Shergal Farkey. Now, great um, ambassador for keep keeping Britain's rivers clean. Oh, good for him. Yeah. Good for him. In a big way. Uh... He had an R. I can't, it was either an Aria or a Vantage. This was when I was really young, and it was a, it was a great guitar. And but I never forget the neck. It was like it had lots of different wood stuff in the neck. The um, quite a lot of those guitars had the laminate. Yeah, a bit like Gibson did in the various parts. And of it Gibson's just made the history. neck feel really cool. Yeah, yeah. There was quite a lot of those Arias that were through. There was a few of them that were through. Through neck as well, mm. so the maybe the neck and the the piece through the center of the guitar would be like a five or a seven piece laminate with the wings stuck on the outside. Yeah, like a right. traditional through neck. Yeah, yeah, cool. Yeah, they were everywhere in the eighties. You watch an eighties top of the pops, you would see an aria of mm -hmm. some kind for sure. And the aria, I remember the aria Pro Two basses mm. were very popular, and they sounded great. Mm. Uh, mine is very definitely whatever the guitar was that Jam pedals have got in their basement. Oh, yeah. It's one of Yanis's. He really loves buying obscure Japanese cheap guitars. Right. And this thing was the funkiest, coolest sounding thing. I, I It was a plastic? No, it was, it was um, wood. Short, 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 those plastic guitars sound amazing. Shortish scale, um, crappy microphonic pickups, everything bad about it, and it was just ultra vibey. Okay. There is a, if you go onto the Jam Pedals um, Instagram back from about May, maybe. I went out there in May, I think it was. Uh, you'll see I'm playing it on the Jam Pedals Instagram. And it's just the vibiest thing. Um, love weird guitars. Non Align says, What's the weirdest thing you've ever eaten? Oi, oi. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> oh, boy. Definitely when we went to um, dinner with Yoshi, surely. Uh, yeah, that was unusual. Just stuff I'd never eaten before, various sea things um, in, in this unbelievable restaurant in the middle uh, of yeah, Tokyo. Magic. Only had two tables. Yeah. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go with that. Um, and it, by weird, did not to say unpleasant or... It was delicious. It was utterly delicious, yeah. but I'd never eaten anything like that before. Mm. Um, when I was a kid, my best friend, Martin, had a house on the Logan River, and he had a tinny, like a boat. Then we got the Logan River, mm. and we'd go fishing. Yes. And we, were, and we were 12... Gators? 13. And no crocs in it. We were, there were no crocs there. That's not a crocodile. <laughs> Um, but we would catch a couple of big fish, go to a little, uh, little, little island, mud island with some, uh, old trees. Anyway, we'd build a little fire, we'd pack the fish in mud, stick them in the fire, go back to the boat, come back an hour later, and we're sort of covered in head to toe with mud. Mm -hmm. And we'd just pull this, the mud turned to like clay. Oh, I see. We'd pull that mud apart and that would take all the scales and the skin and everything off with it. And we just sat there eating this fresh Amazing. Fish. And it was the best fish I've ever had in my life. Amazing. Yeah, and we used to do that quite a bit. That, that was brilliant. That sounds great. That was a really, really great way to spend your childhood. Then yeah. I go back to my um, Striker by Kramer. How we go. <laughs> That was my childhood. That and this. 
Thinking you'd invented it. I think I'd invented it. Yeah. What Eric, a Wally. Eric Kirwan. Hi, Eric. Um, there's no super chat from you. Apologies uh, if we've missed it, and apologies for this being not live. But thank you for your for your super chat. Joe Caliguri says, uh, "Hi, Joe. It's good to hear from you as always, mate." He says, um, "Hey guys, I, my broken pinky is on the mend. I can finally play guitar. Still don't have full range of motion, but playing is good physical therapy." Yeah, absolutely. Good mental therapy as well. Um, it's interesting when you have an injury to a finger and you're having to, f- to think differently about where your fingers go. We get so used to just playing in patterns and stuff, but actually when you have to slow down and go, oh, actually, I can't put that there. I've got to, yeah. I've got to adjust. It's, it's really great way. You start looking at things a little bit differently. Um, yeah. One of the things I'm enjoying at the moment about the uh, learning the songs for the Mick Taylor Blues Implosion Thursday the 18th of July at uh, the Tain Blues Club. Um, Tain, T-E-I-G-N. It's in Devon. Oh, cool. Yeah. Um, is Because there's two guitars. Originally it was going to be keys and guitar, but keys players on tour. Right. So it can't be keys. It's two guitars, and bless him, Jake's going to come play the other guitar. Is... Uh, Encouraging each other to not have to play full things all the time mm. and just leave space. Mm-hmm. And you can just play two note chords because there's somebody else also playing some stuff. And that keeps it sparse sounding because mm-hmm. most of the songs are groove based. Mm. And all I want to hear is bass and drums, really, and vocal. For How many Iron Maiden tunes part. are you doing? Um, we're doing The Trooper. The Run doing, to the Hills. <laughs> Run to the Hills. Come on. Please finish with Run to the Hills. No, we're not doing any rock. Uh, no rock. It's a rockless band. Um, and it's nice just that what you're saying about less. It's almost like a forced thinning out rather than having not enough fingers because you've broken one. Yeah, Joe. yeah. Um, it's more just trying to actually have the economy of playing parts where two guitars are actually playing parts instead of just playing the same damn thing the whole time, yeah, yeah. which I see in so many two guitar bands and it drives me crazy. It's like, there's two of you. Why don't you do something different? Yeah. yeah. Um, That's been my approach since um, Tin Spirits disbanded is playing play less. Yeah. I've been playing a lot less. Like, not been playing at all, actually. <laughs> I was going to say, where is this going? <laughs> really mastered the art of not playing at all. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. But no, it's, it's really cool, actually, because I'm... I'm getting this band together with Doug, which is like the polar opposite of what you're doing. <laughs> so, and including you'll have people turn up. We'll have no one turn up. Well, three chords, lots of people. Lots of chords, no people. There you go. That's how that works. Yep. But that's okay, because I don't care. <laughs> I'm joking. I am course. joking, of course. I'm joking. Actually, that's to come back to Coldplay, I was saying to Dan how impressed I was with Coldplay at Glastonbury. Not, not my favourite band in the world. But it's almost like that music was made for festival and stadium stages. Yeah. A bit like U2. Yeah. So there's nothing complex in terms of the harmony and the melody. There's nothing complex rhythmically, really. Mm. It translates on a on an epic scale. Mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, if you had some weird-ass polyrhythms and complex harmonic structure, it just wouldn't just would never go over in a stage because it in a stadium because it would all be confused. I've told you that story that we had a massive bushfire in Australia and we had a benefit for it and Brian Adams and Sting played. And Sting was on first and he was great, but there's a lot of subtlety in what he does. Yeah. And over this massive stadium, it didn't quite connect. Brian Adams came on and just destroyed the place. Yeah. You know, yeah. two guitars playing the same thing. <clears throat> you know, so yeah. in yeah. Sometimes that's what's needed. I don't know if the opposite is true, like where if you took a band like that and stuck them in a little club, whether it would just be too two dimensional. Because yeah, you, because you have be- to. You've got to. You've got to change the, the the venue. I think. Yeah, and I, I use the word aesthetic, and I don't just mean what it looks like. I mean the whole overall experience of all one's senses. You know, the crowd are utterly essential in a Foo Fighters stadium yep. gig, or. Uh, Coldplay stadium gig, you know, without them, it's not, the thing is not the same by any stretch of imagination. So if you do shrink it down to a bar band, I mean, I'm sure the Foo Fighters would be utterly amazing in a pub, but 
Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Um, what do you know about 80s G&L, says Barry Thomas. Mm. I recently acquired a 87 Superhawk, shallow pickups and a Kayla Vibrato. Mm. God, that was a moment in time, wasn't it? Mm. Um, is that, did, was that the kind of thing that Jerry Cantrell played? I don't know. A very dear friend of mine, Mark Johns, was in a, an amazing prog band called Pond Life. And he had an old G&L in that band and some of the stuff he was able to pull out on that guitar is astonishing. Um, yeah, they, the GNL guitars are great. And it's interesting because, I mean, there are GNL guitars. Um, do we still have that telly here? Somewhere, yeah. So there's a telly here and it's got all the stuff that Mick and I don't like about tellies ceramic pickups and you know Ron, nice, modern Ron bridge yeah modern bridge and pol, yeah, all that stuff it's the most awesome sounding t-star guitar it's a spectacularly good guitar yeah it sounds like a really good black guard telly so they know how to put the elements together to make them work yeah you know yeah i had I, one of my main gigging guitars when i was in my early 20s was a gno lace that special love mm. that guitar um, the thing I don't like about GNL guitars, those ones, was absolutely nuclear warproof poly finish, finish yeah. which you, you just couldn't. It was glass and it was hard as hell. Mm. And so, never been a fan of that because I like guitars to look old. Um, yeah, it looks like that was exactly the kind of guitar that Jerry Cantrell used um, that you're talking about. Uh, uh, this Superhawk. Shallow pickups and Kayla Vibrato. Um, Dan is a fan of the Kayla Vibrato. Never to be confused with the Floyd Rose. I like that it's very smooth. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Cool, man. That's um, what a cool thing. What a cool thing. It's funny, isn't it? We, we, we tend to think of vintage guitars as 60s guitars. Yeah. Frown at all the 70s ones. But actually, there's plenty of decent 80s vintage 80s guitars is, at 80s this point. 40 years ago, you know. Yeah, yeah. Far out. Cool, man. Enjoy, enjoy. Um, drop the tuning, play some Alice in Chains riffs. Happy days. Brian Carpenter. Hey, he mate. says, new pedal day. Uh, I've got a Keeley Andy Timmons Halo. Mm -hmm. uh, delivered tomorrow. Um, so is it, the, is it the Andy Timmons Essentials version? It's the uh, Halo Core. Halo Core, that's the one. So, what? have you seen it? No, what have uh, they done then? Dude, it's killer. So they've taken away um, all of the fluff. All the stuff we moan about. And No, no, just, just the stuff that Andy doesn't use. Because he uses one... All the stuff I moan about. All the, he just uses the one sound. Oh, that looks amazing. Doesn't look brilliant. It's yeah. so good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and they sold out. It's funny, isn't like, it? Straight away. We are in this interesting time in, in guitar history where everything is available. Uh, you can get stuff with a million things on it and a lot of people are, have finally got the guts to go, actually, I don't want all that. Yeah. I just want that. Yeah. And actually, the, perhaps the bigger guts are from the companies yeah. who go sit in their marketing Come meeting on. and say, well... Come on. We could we could easily sell this if we put twenty more features on it. <laughs> yeah. And somebody goes, let's not do that. Yeah. Let's just keep it focused and yeah. Hello, Rose. Because then you're removing um, barriers to entry, and you're removing option paralysis. And option paralysis is the biggest killer of any sort of playing guitar, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Um, I just realised we didn't actually. Uh, answer Jason's question earlier. What was it? About when um, when does playing guitar turn into music and vice versa? Ah, oh, great. Okay, so... We just we went off on a tangent. There's um, a great... Anyway, let's finish Brian Carpenter's. Okay. He says, any single effects that are part of a multi-pedal you'd like to see separate on their own? Uh, not for me, because all mine are anyway. Yeah, no, I... Um... When the protein came out, I thought it'd be really great if they to separate those, and they did that, which is great, because that's a wicked sounding dual overdrive. I have thought of one. Um, yeah. Uh, 
I would like. I, sorry, just to say, because I often thought um, DNM drive. If we split, you know, if we split that up, but I love. I have to have both sides, so I, there's, I, there's no real advantage to me of just having my side. Um, so yeah, no, I, I'm I'm good. Would be the CXM reverb for me. I use two sounds in it. Yeah. Okay. Um, actually, that's not quite true. I do actually use three, but I would be happy with two, and that would be the short room reverb for the kind of Jimmy at Olympic sound, mm -hmm. and the uh, plate, and not have all the other stuff, and just have two fixed settings of that. But then, what are the fixed settings? Who would choose them? Yeah. How yeah. would you change them? Yep. That would be tough. That would be tough. Uh, sorry, Jason, finally to your question. When does playing guitar turn into playing music and vice versa? Yeah. It's... We did a great video with Tim Lurch and he talks about the difference between practicing and playing and getting into a flow state where you can just play in it. And it might be something as simple as, you know, You've been practicing all this, you know, complex harmony stuff and whatever. It might just be being in a position where you can just play a note and then just think about how many different ways that you can approach the note. And then and just let that note lead you to somewhere else. And then something, you know, you start to I'll have chicken madras, please. Yeah. Um, for me, the music's happening when the music is leading you, not your preconceived ideas of what... You know, I'm not thinking now, from here, I'm not going, OK, now I need to go to A. You know, so that note, I might let that, that sound And it's just, once the sound is, is, is leading you, that's when I feel you're making music. Well, it's just something that is meaningful. You to get to a point where you can even, you know, just being able to play something that means something to you. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's interesting, that, because can it ever be music if it's just you? That's a philosophical question. Uh, yeah. Can't tell me James Taylor isn't when he's doing his thing by himself isn't music. Um, I think it's music when it connects with another human being. Is when it becomes music. I would say. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if I agree with that. I think, I think if you're playing something that's meaningful to you, I've I've done, the best playing I've ever done has been alone where I've just been, I'm not there to, I'm just in the moment. Mm. And and stuff starts to happen. It's, it's, I find it s incredibly meaningful. Um, yeah. Yeah. So coming back from that giant philosophical question, which is basically, if a tree falls in the woods, does it make a sound? It's the same. What's that? Um, castanets. The sound of one hand clapping. Ah. See? It's cl very clearly a sound. Very clearly a sound. Yeah. Hello. Um, but I, I would say, like, practicing guitar is never music. Because if you're practicing, you should be thinking about it, concentrating on where your fingers go. And that's not music. That's practicing. And then routining might... This is what Tim Lurch said. Three stages. Practice, routine, perform. Mm. Practice should, never should be music, really, because you're concentrating, you're in your head, you're thinking about learning the notes. Routining may veer into music sometimes because you then start to do it unconsciously. You become unconsciously competent to use that roundel. And then performing should always be music. Mm -hmm. And it stops being music the moment you start thinking about it again because you're then not in a state of flow. So I would say that music is a state of flow that begins... Well, it doesn't begin and end. It, it exists between whoever is making the music, a band or an individual, and somebody who is consuming the music. And they might be the band as well. 
I'm going to disagree with Dan and say I don't think it's music if you're the only one experiencing it. Yeah, no, I think it's... You I disagree. Think, yeah, I think it's... Yeah. You know, I think you have extremely valid experiences. I don't want to be relying on anyone else to validate my, my musical experience. I didn't say it was validation. I said it is a flow. Yeah. It's a, a communal... I think there's a communal... Absolutely there's a yeah. communal experience. Yeah, and I didn't mean validation. I didn't say they have to necessarily like it. No, 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 no. But but for it to be music... Yeah. I think, I think very much... I mean... Yeah, no, I think you. I think it absolutely can be. Mm. Look at this. That's kind of the guitar it used to be. That's kind of it is now. That's better. Uh, this, yeah, that's better. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm not complaining. Looks like a custom shop one on the back. Oh, okay. There you go. Nothing wrong with custom shop ones, by the way. Yeah, right. That's how. That's that's rock and roll. That's rock and roll. Yeah. Good. Um, that's us. Um, we're really sorry that the, the live stream went down tonight. It's it's unfortunate thing that happens sometimes because of our rural internet and potentially because of the 200,000 people Coming back from down me. the road. Yeah. Having been to uh, Glastow Wasto. Um, cool. So hopefully this will make up for that in part. Thank you very much for being with us. We really appreciate it. This Friday will be Steve Rothery. Sorry, I completely... Um, dropped a bollock last week, to use a phrase, and mm -hmm. um, just couldn't get it edited and out the door fast enough. But that will happen this week. Yeah, I love the the the, the video, the Tube Avidrive video was great. Yeah, it was nice. It's really, some really great sounds in there. It was nice. It was very nice. <laughs> it's very nice. <laughs> uh, groovy. Okay. Um, we will see you soon. See you soon. Tomorrow we're going to be filming with Jesse Hoff uh, of Lazy J Amps to go through some classic tweeds. I am spying with my eyes a 1956 Fender Bassman that's just literally just sat right there. And a load of other finery is going to be turning up tomorrow. So it's going to be a big ampy day tomorrow because Dan and I are also going to do a show on what does a Vox, a Fender and a Marshall actually sound like when it's overdriving. Yeah, love it. So we we just gonna keep it to oh, that. Oh, it's gonna we? be great. We're just gonna keep it to that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Perfect. Sexy. All right. Uh, cheerio. Dan will um, do the les les en or and uh, play us out. What's that? It does not suck. <laughs> Really, it's got a massive anti-suck factor, this guitar. <laughs> okay. See, I pick up this guitar at home and and I can just sit by myself and just really get taken away. Yeah. Okay. Right, let's turn this off. Okay, see you soon, people. Thank you for being with us. <laughs>